What's on? And welcome back to Kanzai, the second turn. So what I'm actually doing is I'm doing the SD route, which is going to give us a different ending. But I thought I would show you this bit because actually uh, we need to send Naki on his own. Um, so we will actually get to read the body. So it'll be interesting to see. So don't worry. I'm sure it'll be okay. Right. Naki doesn't seem too inspired by my words, but he leaves anyway. We stand in an awkward silence for a few minutes before the lights flicker. As soon as the lights power back on, Sophia punches in a rapid fire a series of numbers into the keypad beside the door. The door swings open and the three of us crowd into the doorway. Mr. Orton! Sophia rushes in and grabs the body laying on the floor. Mr. Orton! Sir! She shakes him gently, but he doesn't respond. Detective Gursky leans over Mr. Orton's body and places two fingers on his neck. He doesn't have a pulse. No, he was just alive a moment ago. Sophia pulls Mr. Orton's body away from the desk and tries to roll it over, but she can't support his weight. What are you doing? There's still a chance I can save him. Please help me. Gursky points at me. Con guy, help us move the body. I step forward and coil my arms under one of Mr. Orton's arms. With a groan, Detective Gursky and I lift the body and lay Mr. Orton on his back. As I lay Mr. Orton's arm down, my hand brushes against his. Oh no, not now, not. Even as I struggle to maintain consciousness, consciousness, my mind is flooded with Mr. Orton's final thoughts. I'm hot, but it's not because of my surroundings. I feel like I'm burning up from the inside. I can't breathe, and all I can feel is fear. Why didn't I protect her? I never should have let her be with him. I wish I had never met him. No. I wish I could have stopped him. I was so close. No matter what, he mustn't find it. Please, someone, anyone, keep it safe. The vault must be protected at all cost. I open my eyes slowly. I'm kneeling on the ground, but Detective Gursky and Sophia aren't even looking at me. Sophia has her hands on Mr. Orton's chest with her fingers interlocked. One, two, three, four. She pumps his chest with her hands, counting out loud as she does. Mr. Orton doesn't move. Again, she pumps his chest, trying to start his heart, but nothing again ha But again, nothing. <laughs> she leans down and grabs his mouth, but Detective, Detective Gursky steps in and pulls her away. That's enough. What are you doing? There's still a chance. She punches him with her free arm, but it doesn't affect him. Look at him. His skin is pale, his pupils are dilated, and he's covered in sweat. There's a good chance he was poisoned. And you could be poisoned too if you try to resuscitate him. Sophia makes another desperate attempt to escape from Detective Gursky's grasp, but he holds her firm. Don't. You did your best, but there's nothing we can do now. Sophia's knees buckle under her, and she falls to the ground with a choked sob. I thought she would just Mr. Or Mr. Orton's personal assistant, but his death seems to have really shaken her up. Detective Gursky kneels beside her and places a hand gently on her shoulder. Sophia, everything's going to be okay. She shakes her head, but when she opens her mouth to speak, all she can do is sob. I back out of the room slowly. They really don't need me here right now. In the hallway, Naki and Lime are waiting. Lime said he's gone. Okay guys, so I am going to stop it here and I will see you. Okay everybody, and it looks like we're back. Um, so it looks like here is the ending. That's cool. We'll talk later. Okay, so let's go back this way. I pace back and forth in the hallway slowly, attempting to piece together the puzzle. I feel like I'm close to something, but I just can't put my finger on it. My thoughts are interrupted by the sounds of sirens. Looks like the police are finally here. All this investigation and I still haven't figured out who the killer is. Oh well, I guess I really should have just left should just leave it to the professionals. My part in this case is over.
As soon as we arrive back at the apartment, Aki locks the front door and turns to face Limi and I. So, did you find anything? Well, yeah, but I'm not exactly sure what it is. I pull out the SD card from my back pocket. Where did you find that? The museum. Mr. Autumn went to a great length to keep this hidden. Then we'd better have a look at it. I don't know. Don't you think we should hand this over to Detective Gursky? Why would we do that? If it's important, we'll let him know about it eventually. Besides, it's not like the police would have found that anyway, so they're not missing out on anything. Um, I guess so. So what are we waiting for? Let's have a look at this. She pops the SD card into their computer, and we wait patiently for the data to load. I click through the files quickly, and we scan the contents of each one as they load. Most of it looks a little more than complicated, formulas and diagrams to me, but something about breaking down certain types of tissues, it seems. A lot of this is pretty complicated stuff. No kidding. It looks like Mr. Otten's been working on some sort of secret project for quite some time. Suddenly, things start to fall into place. His office was private so that no one would see him working. When he was done, he'd hide his progress in the vault in the museum. No one would even guess anything was there. Whenever the... whenever the... the blah, 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 whatever this project was, it must have meant a lot to him. Oh hey, a video file! <clears throat> I double click and the file pops open. A pixelated video fills the screen. Well. Wow. Lousy camera quality. Aki frowns and resizes the video, but it doesn't do much to improve the quality. From what I can make out, the video appears to be of a young man walking down a bare white hallway. Where was this taken? It looks like security camera footage. The angle's very high. <coughs> so Mr. Otten was spying on someone? Well, that's creepy. The video zooms in on the young man's face, and an uneasy feeling settles in my stomach. Aki stares at the screen, then back at me. Khan, this guy in the video? That's you. Oh, man! Well, that... That was indeed something. <laughs> Did not expect that. I can tell you that. Okay, so I'm now going to quickly do um, the true ending so we can see what the actual truth is. Welcome back. I am back. Okay, and now we are here with the true ending. Uh-oh. The door bursts open and Kevin rushes in. I grab the SD card and stuff it into my back pocket before whirling around to face him. Kevin slams the door shut and spins around, jumping in surprise as soon as he sees me. Since when? He glances up at the camera mounted on the ceiling and lets out a frustrated sigh. Right. Limay touches my arm to gen my arm gently and whispers. He's panicking. Kevin, what's going on? What's all the beeping for? I take a step towards him, but he reaches out his back pocket and pulls out a knife. Stay there! He rushes past me, keeping the knife pointed at my throat. With his free hand, he grabs Lee Mei and pulls her towards himself with a rough tug. What are you doing? I move slowly away from Kevin, never taking my eyes off of him. I have to get out of here! The door's locked. <laughs> Not for long. He laughs, but it sounds more like a, pi a pained wheeze. We're coming out of a lockdown. In a few seconds, the doors will unlock, and I'll be home free. Something in my brain clicks. You're the one who poisoned Mr. Orton. You're the one who could have. Kevin laughs, a strange mix of fear and derision. Yeah, you're kind of slow to the party. Your friends already figured that out. He waves the knife at me again, but I don't move. Con! Kevin is the murderer! Despite my current predicament, I find myself rolling my eyes. This information would have been a lot more useful, useful about 10 seconds ago. Hang in there! We're coming to get you! Kevin, dude. Why? 
Why? Are you kidding? He moves towards the exit as quickly as he can, but Li Mei isn't cooperating. Her body hangs limp, and he's forced to drag her towards the door. He took advantage of my family. He ruined their lives. That's my fault. I had to. No, you didn't. You're so short-sighted. Did you even think any of this, this through at all? We're interrupted by pounding on the door. Kevin! Kevin, we know you're in there! Kevin puts his fingers to his lips, mo motioning for the two of us to be silent. Detective, he has a knife and he's got Lee May. Kevin glares at me. The pounding on the door stops. Did they give up? I hear a soft beeping noise. Sounds like they're trying to override the retina detector. I don't think Kevin's noticed yet. Kevin moves slowly towards the exit, eyes darting between me and the door. I move towards Kevin, but his grip on Lee May tightens. Kong, I don't. Lee May's voice is only a whisper, but the fear in her eyes looks more like concern for me than her own well-being. Kevin stumbles a few paces back, dragging Lee May along with him. He's already breathing heavily. It's obvious he's not used to anything physically strain whatever. <laughs> Still, the look in his eyes promised that he's not going down without at least attempting to pull that put that knife in someone's chest. I take a step forward as he moves one step towards the exit. I take another step forward and Kevin swings a knife at me. It whistles through the air and I try to jump out of the way. My ankle twists under my weight and I stumble forward. Ugh. The door bursts open, but Detective Gursky and Aki freezes as soon as they see the situation. I'm fine. I hold my hand up, motioning for Gursky and Aki to stay at a distance. I switch my gaze back and back and forth between Kevin's eyes and the knife in his hand. There's got to be an opening. Detective Gursky and Aki still stand in the doorway, not daring to move. Kevin keeps his knife trained on me. Out of the corner of my eyes, I see Aki blink. Suddenly, Kevin's body shivers. He looks around wildly, as if he's in a daze, and the hand holding the knife goes limp. Ugh. Badass! <coughs> Without hesitation, I race forward and swing my arm. My fist meets his face, and he stumbles back. He drops the knife, and it falls to the ground with a clatter. Detective Gursky moves in quickly, grabbing Kevin's free hand and experting expertly twisting his arm behind his back. He gives me a grudging smile. Not bad, kid. I release Kevin and follow, allow Gursky to take over. As soon as I do, Lee Mei runs to me and takes my hand. I look down at her and give her a reassuring smile. It's okay, Kevin won't hurt you anymore. She smiles back at me. She looks grateful, but there's something about her eyes that still reflects fear. She's not afraid of Kevin though, so before I can ask, she gives me she gives my hand a soul squeeze. Thank you. Oh, it's so cute. Um, out of the corner of my eye, I see Aki watching the scene with a satisfied look in her eyes. <sighs> I approach her and lean casually against the wall beside her. So that little attack that Kevin had just a moment ago. You can thank me later. She flashes her usual confident smile. You know, you blink every time you do it. Not very subtle. Subtle, super, super there. I poke her arm as if somehow that will help to get my point across. I'm not sure why I'm teasing her. I guess I'm curious to see her reaction. Wow, wow, wow. I thought it wasn't working here. And you pass out every time you use your Kansei. Okay, you have a point. I could teach you how to control it if you want. How to stay conscious. It'll take a while for you to get it right, but I get the feeling you'll be stuck with us for a while. She leans against the wall next to me. Her smile was softer now, more genuine. I hope you don't mind. I laugh and shake my head. No, I don't mind. I tilt my head back and gaze thoughtfully at the ceiling. After all these years of running, it might be nice to finally take a break. Okay. So, maybe there'll be an ending scene. I hope there will be. And we'll find the truth.
The trip to the Autumn Estate was only yesterday, but somehow it feels like it's been longer than that. Oh, I clicked the wrong thing. Maybe it was just the hours of interrogation from the police that came after Aki and Detective Gursky solved the case. Or maybe it was the uncomfortable atmosphere when Aki and Detective Gursky actually had to share credit for solving the case. Maybe it's just a strange feeling of nostalgia. Everything felt so familiar. Piecing together people's life. The adrenaline rush. It's the first time I've felt real in like three years. Hopefully today isn't as eventful as yesterday. Aki stretches and throws herself on the couch. I feel like celebrating our mission accomplished by doing absolutely nothing. Mission accomplished, accomplished, but your client is dead. Ah, oh, good point. Well, either way, we don't have any work today. We might as well enjoy it. The words have barely escaped Aki's lips when there's a firm knock on the door. Aki looks at Li Mei. The petite girl runs to the door and stands on her toes to peer through the eye hole. When she turns around, she doesn't look pleased. Detective. Great. Aki takes her time unlocking the door. Finally, she makes a great show of opening it. Well, hello, Miko. What brings you to this corner of the world? Oh, I don't know. I guess I just assumed that you want to know what happened with Kevin. <laughs> what happened? We found his prints in the bottle that Sophia brought us. Once we showed him, he pled guilty. He added liquid nicotine to Mr. Otten's cognac and simply waited for him to drink it. When you showed up that day, Mr. Otten had a panic attack, and he went to the bottle for comfort. He wound up killing him instead. What's going to happen to Mr. Otten's estate now? Hard to say. Technically, it belongs to Liam, but we're having trouble finding him. Why? Where'd he go? He ran off during all the confusion. Guess he didn't want to be arrested for his own crimes. Aki looks severely displeased. So he's still out there somewhere? Don't worry. We'll find him. He smiles pointedly at Aki. We always do. She flashes him her trademark grin. You don't have to tell me, officer. Gursky laughs. Well, I'll be seeing you kids around. Try to stay out of trouble, okay? Anything you say, sir. From the smile on Aki's face, I get the feeling that's not a pledge we're going to be able to keep. Then again, looking at Gursky's expression, I'm fairly certain he doesn't expect us, expect us to keep it either. Staying here might not be so bad after all. For the first time in a long time, I'm looking forward to what tomorrow will bring. Well done, you solved the case! You've also unlocked some bonus content as a reward for your hard work. Check the main menu screen to see what you've unlocked. Oh, what have we unlocked? Extras. There's an epilogue. Wow, let's watch it. Hey, you here or what? I got the stuff you wanted. I'm here. No need to shout, Liam. Uh, it's chance. Yeah, whatever. This is all I can get. I, I had to sneak out the back before the police arrested me, too. What did I tell you about staying out of trouble? Are you gonna lecture me now or something? It's not like I could have gotten anything else anyway. That Detective Gursky insists on keeping most of these papers as evidence. Evidence? How did he even find it in the first place? He did. That con guy kid found it. Con guy? Some new guy hanging out with the twins in that china thing. Did he have dirty blonde hair dyed black at the ends? Yeah. You know him? You should have stopped him. Oh, come on. What did you want me to do? Kill him? Yes. It's what I would have done. Well, as you and father are so fond of pointing out, I'm not like you. Did he really? Well, at least you finally managed to do your job. How many years did it take you again? Oh, don't even start. I did what you told me to do. So you'll leave me alone now, right? You're free to go. Go enjoy the rest of your pitiful life, Liam. Wow! What an ending! 
so Charles and Liam are siblings and the paper that we found about his old experiments that must be what Chance is looking for oh this is getting interesting well anyway guys I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one because I will make the next part so I'll see you next time bye